in Queens, New York. Um, my parents were both uh, from Puerto Rico. I think my mother was born in Puerto Rico, my father was born in the Bronx. Um, but uh, yeah, I grew up in Queens, New York, and I lived there to this day. Both grandmothers, um, both grandfathers, and my father's grandmother raised him, she raised him mostly, his, his grandmother. Um, I did not know my mother's parents um, my mother has an act a, a very big family actually and I don't even know that I've met most of them. Um, I've only met a few of her sisters and stuff like that, so grandparents and one great grandma. They were um, Puerto Rico because of because of its um, because of the nature of being on an island and because it's isolated. A lot of times the um, you know the opportunities are limited and so you know, people come to the United States for jobs and for yeah. better lives. But in the case of my family, my uh, grandparents um, were back and forth. Like they, they they were here for a few years and then they went back to Puerto Rico and then they were back here for a little while. And so my mother was like going to school everywhere. And then um, I think they stayed here through my mother's uh, late teens until she went into college. And then she got married at about 19, and they went back to Puerto Rico. But it was always about, you know, um, do they have money to buy land out there, and uh, you know, was it easier for them to work here? I have no idea what my grandmother did uh, or my grandfather in terms of making a living. My grandfather is Taino. He's um, he's uh, very much has the indigenous Indian blood in him. And so he was kind of a mountain man and in the forest all the time and carrying an axe and doing all those things. And, and my grandmother was more, uh, she had more Spanish in her, she was lighter skinned. Um, but I don't know, in terms of my mother, my mother was trying to get away from all that old fashioned stuff and be more modern and so she wanted to stay here. Um, and my father's family I knew very little about and they seem to mostly be here. His mother was here, his stepfather was here, his great grandmother was here. His grandmother, my great grandmother, was in Manhattan. Um, he had sisters here. Uh, so most of his family was here. And I don't know when they came or um, if he lived at all in Puerto Rico. I think he lived here most of his life. I know that my father was very much into the, the, the salsa de rap from the 70s. Strangely, my, um, my mother was into doo-wop and soul music and Motown and that type of stuff. Um, uh, she liked Latin music, but she liked boleros and, mm -hmm. and the slow stuff, the very vocal, verbal stuff. Um, at my mother's parents' house, I don't think I ever heard any music. I don't think I ever heard it. Um, my father's family, uh, not at the grandparents, because they were very strict. It's you know, something very kind of old-fashioned and uh, religious, and so they, you know, their music is kind of um, music and dancing is kind of mm -hmm. uh, against their morals. But in terms of my father's uh, sisters and stuff like that. Um, and his house, because he, uh, my mother and father divorced when I was five years old. And whenever we spent time with him, there was always Latin music and we were always dancing, jumping around. And at somebody's house, eating dinner, um, whether it was his grandmother's or, um, or his, one of his sisters. But it was mostly, um, it was mostly that stuff from, from the 70s, the salsa, the best stuff from the 70s. I think that my 
um, you know, you heard older kind of folk music and stuff like that with his grandmother. But, um, you know, in terms of what I can recall them listening to when I was there, it was, it was that, it was the, the late 60s, uh -huh. 70s, South Africa. No, none of my um, family are musicians. My father never knew his father. Um, there was a whole controversy there. We don't know, you know, we've kind of, him and my mother went looking in Puerto Rico trying to do research to see if they could find him. And um, I think they figured out that, they, that he was probably married and that my grandmother got pregnant by mistake. And it was, uh, it was a big controversy because nobody wanted to talk about this thing. And also he was black, you know? He was um, African, Puerto Rican, and so, and the, my grandmother is very, very fair-skinned, and her family is very fair, and even in the islands, there's a lot of racism, you know, against the, the kids like that, too. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's funny, but, um, but so, it's the only explanation. And also, uh, everywhere that they would ask for him in Puerto Rico, um, People would always respond, oh, Francisco Martinez, the, the dancer. You know? And so apparently he was a famous dancer. And everybody knew him as a dancer. My mother told me this when I was getting ready to perform on Ma in Madison Square Garden for the first, my first performance. And she said, how do you feel? And are you excited? And I said, yeah. And she said, you know, you get this from your grandfather. And I said, my grandfather? Who grandfather? Because the grandfather I knew didn't dance. And she was like, no, that your father's father. And nobody could find and nobody could figure out who he was. Everywhere we asked for him, they, everybody was like, ah, bailarina, bailarina, the, the, the dancer. So that was kind of spooky because because the way my life got to dance was very strange and it's, it's weird that that would be somehow in the lineage. But in terms of musicians, um, I don't know. We, we've got a few artists in the family, but, but mm -hmm. no musicians. That was, it's funny because the, the hip stuff was already past us, you know? It was, we were already past the hip stuff that was hip that I find hip now, mm -hmm. and my parents might have felt it was hip because, again, I was born here, and I was, in, you know, the stuff that I was listening to as I was growing up was, you know, very old school hip hop and and Michael Jackson and that type of stuff, you know, Lionel Richie, <laughs> you know, it's like uh, Prince, you know, those oh, things yeah. were happening at that time, and then. Salsa for me was our music, but it was still kind of my parents' music, you know. And the my grandparents' stuff was the kind of the tin can sounding stuff, the the um, the, uh, the the old songs in the song Altuna before the word salsa was ever, you know, um, kind of coined. That phrase was ever kind of coined. That was the, the stuff that they would listen to, and so so it was strange. I knew what my you know, my father's very progressive also, and so he was into everything at the time. Um, he was into um, the artists that were that were um, happening during the, the 80s and mm -hmm. Hector Lobo's new stuff and, and uh, Ray Barreto's newer stuff. At, at about 14, um, you know, my father would start to tell me these stories, or I started to hear the stories, because I'm sure he was telling me all the time. But I started to kind of listen and, and be more, because as you start to get into that age, you start wondering more about where you're from, and mm -hmm. you kind of want to find out about your roots and stuff like that. And so I became a little more interested in it, and so I started, you know, whenever I saw it, uh, uh, at the time there were cassettes and, and, you know, CDs were, like I had to, when I was 18 or 19, start to get familiar with CDs. I used to collect 12-inch <laughs> singles. The, 12-inch singles of uh, the albums, you know, I, that was what I did. I collected a bunch of those. Um, but uh, then I had to kind of like, I gotta get CDs, you know. But um, and that happened late. I was I was, um, you know, 17, 18 years old. CDs were buying cassettes at that time. But uh, yeah, I started to. If I saw something that I that I know my father had mentioned, I would grab it, you know, and and, and uh, see what he was talking about and try to get a feel for it. Um, so I've been, you know, collecting music passively since that time. But um, but I, it wasn't until I got a little older and it became a little more strong in me to get attached to my culture 
that I started to become obsessed with, um, you know, wanting that stuff as part of my life. I want because I had the urban stuff, you know, that, but I wanted to have the Latin stuff because it, because I was all those things, you know, and so I wanted to have some of that stuff and be familiar with it. It was it was embarrassing to me to see a non-Latin person able to deal with music and and or play an instrument and I was like ah, that's my stuff and I can't do that and it was like it was a little like mm. but uh you know at that age you know 17 16 you start like I gotta get you know I want that stuff in my life